Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In this video, we will talk about how to properly make a build. And as you can see on the screen, I'm gonna be using Destiny Item Manager to walk you through some of that. If you're not familiar with that, we'll talk about it briefly. One of the main reasons I'm doing this is I recently hit 1,000 subscribers and of course made partner based on that. And I really wanna thank the community for that. As part of that, I posted a poll on my community page and one of the key things that people wanted was to see another build video. So I thought instead of just making another video, I would actually show you how to make builds because in many cases, I think people are intimidated by the process, but I think if you keep focused and use the right tools, making the build that you want is actually fairly simple. I'd love to teach you guys. If you like the video, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hop in my Discord. I'd really appreciate it. So again, in this video, we're gonna talk about builds and this is Destiny Item Manager. This is actually the app version on the PC. You can also do this on mobile devices. As you can tell, I have too much stuff. I'm a hoarder, but uh, who in Destiny isn't? So to start out, what I'm gonna talk about is kind of my thought process and how you can think about builds and be efficient at making builds that are very effective. So first off, in Destiny Item Manager, one of the things you can do, and I'm not gonna go into all the features of the tool, but you can actually go in and you can save builds. And I'm gonna pull up one that I did for one of my re more recent videos, which was a season 14 end game build that was focused around survivability. So again, in these builds, one of the things you have to keep in mind is you have to have a goal. So the goal for this build is I wanna be as survivable as possible because I'm gonna be under leveled in end game content. So the first thing I think of is do I need an exotic to do that? And one of the exotics I'm using for this is I'm Inoculus, which allows you to have a second smoke bomb and then when you make yourself invisible with that smoke bomb, you actually gain damage resistance. And if you do that with other people, they get damage resistance and you get your smoke bomb quicker. So again, it's a lot of synergy. So again, it's focused on that. Once you have that in place, once you know what exotic, then you can start thinking about what do I wanna do with my other armor pieces. So then I would start thinking about mods. So you have elemental well mods and charge of light mods. So what I like to do then, again, is, is think through that. And in this case, I'm gonna use some elemental well mods that I happen to know will help with survivability. Those two mods are Reaping Wellmaker. And again, Reaping Wellmaker is a mod that allows you to make wells by using your class ability and then getting a kill for weapon. Now, your class ability in this case is your dodge. And since you're trying to get your smoke bam quicker for this build, you're gonna be doing it all the time. After you get those wells, then you have Well Tenacity. Well Tenacity actually gives you damage resistance similar to what you do with Omnoculus when you pick up wells. So, you're constantly creating wells, you're picking them up, you're getting damage resistance. So again, that's really useful. Now, because of this, these mods that you have at the end of each of your pieces of armor, you can only do one of them per piece of armor. You only have five pieces of armor. So I've already taken up two of those with these. So I have to be judicious now. The other thing is I've made these void. So because of that, I know I'm gonna need at least two void pieces of armor to put those on or they won't work. Then I start thinking about, okay, so that will, that covers the whole elemental well piece and, and a lot of survivability, but I want to augment that even more. So within Charge of Light, you have Protective Light. Everyone knows Protective Light. You get damage resistance. Basically, if you get to the point where your shield is taken off, it basically saves you. And this has saved me in more than one Grandmaster Nightfall or Master Lost Sector in many cases, or even raids. So again, this is Void as well. So again, now you have to have three Void pieces of armor plus that exotic. So obviously that focus you, you in on what you need as far as requirements for your armor. And that's another reason as you're collecting armor, it's good to grind up and get as many copies of particular. So let's say for instance, now that you have transmog, you don't have to worry about the look of armor, but you do need to work for your, let's say your class item. You should have three class items at least that are high level and have void, arc, and solar. Same thing with your chest, same thing with your boots. You should have those master worked at higher level. So again, you can use them across many builds. After that, the next thing I'm gonna do is cause this is GM content usually, or things that have champions. This could be GMs, this could be even master vault of glass. I'm gonna need on my arms. I'm gonna need to have space to put mods on to deal with that. So in this case, I have a hand cannon for overload and a anti barrier for scout. Again, these are gonna change season to season. But those you would need if you're dealing with champions. I guess you use Unstoppable, you would use something else, right? So you have to kind of keep that in mind with what, mo what you're going to have. But that means on your armor, you're going to need to have points of energy available for that to work. On your chest armor, typically you can do a lot of things that protect you. So for instance, I have sniper damage resistance and concussive dampener, concussive dampener. 
will allow you to protect from area of effect. Sniper is obviously sniper, and you have arc and void other types. So again, those are things you're going to have to reserve space on your chest armor, which in this case is my Aminoculus. Next, for your helmet and your leg armor, you're going to need typically ammo finders and scavengers, which again allow you to find more ammo for what you're looking for the things that you need the most in your build. In this case, this is rockets. Um, I've changed this up from time to time. I also use grenade launcher a lot because sometimes I'll come with truth teller for blinding grenades, and I'll also come in with like anarchy. So again, that way I'll get that the ammo back more. So a lot of times I'll do this with my heavy weapons. Again, it just depends on what you're concerned about that you're not going to get on a regular basis. And then in your class item, typically that's going to be whatever really nice mods they have from the seasonal pass. Typically what I've seen recently is that the ones at the end of the, towards the end of your seasonal pass or your artifact, those will be the nice things that you can actually put on your class item. And your class item, in this case, I'm using energy accelerant because I'm using that with things that either have Firefly or Chain Reaction or things like that to do extra damage. And then in this case, I was using Unstoppable Swords Condenser. condenser. Ah, say that three times fast. And the reason I was using that is because in this case, if I had all three of these, and for Unstoppable Swords Condenser, you use your melee ability and it basically stuns Unstoppables. Well, for your, your Hunter, that's a smoke bomb that you're getting constantly. So this would allow me to cover all three champions Without, because of course it's difficult to do that if you're only limited on your armor, on your arms, to only having two particular unstoppable or anti bearer or other champion mods. So this allows you to cover all three. Next, after that, I'll kind of fill in with whatever. So I'll put in, you know, mods that are like, you know, extra recovery or extra resilience. I'll put in things like, you know, dynamo on this one or invigoration. Again, things that. When you either pick up uh, orbs or you use your class ability or something like that, you get the abilities back faster. And again, that's just to fill out. So again, you start with your exotic, then you go to your charge of light and elemental well mods. Then you go to the, the sort of your, your class item mods, your things that are in that season. You get your scavengers and your ammo finders and whatever protective things you need. And then you kind of fill it in with whatever you have left as far as energy point. And that makes it easy then to focus on the type of build you want. Otherwise, what happens is you get kind of lost. And what's the purpose of this build? And what am I trying to do? Now, to give you another example, I'll go into my Warlock. And this is my recent freeze tag build. And this build is different. It is protective because you'll see some similar elements. But the big thing with this build is I'm trying to control the battlefield using my stasis turrets for my Warlock. So again, similar type of build in that I do want protection, but different in that I'm controlling the entire battlefield. So in this case, for the protective piece, I'll put on Boots of the Assembler. So that's the exotic I'm building this around. And that allows me to have longer uh, rifts, but also to help protect my teammates, right? By sending them healing from that rift, even if they're not sitting in it. From a Charge with Light perspective, obviously one of the things I'm doing is protective light, which again, I talked about earlier. I'm using Charged Up to give me additional stacks for that. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because the armor I was using was solar. And so, you know, you usually you have Charged Up the solar, you have stacks on stacks, you have other types of things that stack additional charges of light that are for different burns. So that's something to keep in mind. And then I was doing Shield Break Charge. This I used as kind of an extra thing. And in this case, what I was doing is if I'm in, in some sort of endgame combat that has match game or something like that with some of my weapons, that would allow me to get charges as well. Then, just like with the other stuff, I was basically getting helmet armor and leg armor with a grenade launcher, scavenger, because again, I'm using anarchy here and I was using truth teller. So again, with by having both of those, I would get the drops of armor of, of ammo for both of those, which is useful. Chest armor, again, similar thing, concussive and snipe and sniper. And then obviously the last thing is glacial inheritance. And glacial inheritance allows me with my super, because again, this is stasis. If I get kills with my stasis super then I get my stasis super back quicker. Now the stasis super is not the key part of this build, but this is a good thing to have in place because there are times where you might need to get out of trouble in certain content, especially end game content, where it'd be nice to have that super available and this allow you to get it quicker. So as you can tell, even though this build is completely different, I came to it with the same mindset. What's my goal? What exotics do I need? what charge with light or elemental well mods, and then how do I fill in the rest of the build, okay? So when you're doing a build, 
make sure you go in with a laser focus on what you're trying to accomplish. And if you do that, you'll find some interesting combos that you can put together. And I hope this is really helpful for you guys. If it is, feel free to like the video, subscribe my channel, and head into my Discord. I would love to see the types of builds you guys could build with this. And I'll see you guardians in the tower.